Greetings citizens of the world. This is massive. WikiLeaks has revealed what we've all been saying for some time now, the GOP is full of traitors and Clinton cronies, and they've been working day and night to ruin President Trump. Paul Ryan, Carly Fiorina, John Kosich, Lindsey Graham, and John McCain were all named in the latest WikiLeaks release, and apparently were in the tank to not only ensure Trump lost the election, but to undermine him if he won. And that's exactly what they're doing. This is a clear-cut case of treason and should be treated as such. These traitors should be immediately rounded up and removed from office. The sheer audacity and treacherous nature of these wretched people is almost unfathomable. In an email from John Podesta to Huma Abden, the pair discussed averting Clinton campaign funds to various Republicans who were secretly on the Clinton payroll. The email, sent in July of this year, describes how funds were being diverted from Clinton's campaign to the super PACs of Jeb Bush, Carly Fiorina, and John Kosich. According to the email, J.B., C.F., and J.K. PACs will be noticeably silent for the rest of the campaign. Each will receive a significant allowance from advertising budget. HRC is in the loop and has talked to all three personally. Eyes only. Other emails that surfaced but do not refer to anything other than title have also surfaced that raised eyebrows. It seems at a glance that the Clinton Foundation, or as I am calling it, the Pantsuit Mafia, has bought off several key members of the Republican Party to push the Clinton agenda. Such as. He is on board, will retract the invitation to speak. Eyes only. This email was dated days before Speaker of the House Paul Ryan withdrew the invitation to Donald Trump to speak at an event in Wisconsin. Even though we do not have the smoking gun to say it was him, no other logical conclusion can be assumed. Other emails hint at the money being moved to Republican elected officials in the House and Senate. For instance FEC reports shows that two large donations from PACs and private sources late early October went to John McCain right after he attacked Trump publicly criticized Trump. That happened shortly after a slew of emails concerning moving money to support one candidate and move support from another. Shortly thereafter, his challenger in this tight race, Kirkpatrick, lost several key donors and money and support lessened from the DNC and the DSCC in the last few weeks of the race. The thing to note is that McCain is one of the lead sponsors of a committee to investigate any Russian influence into the election. Senator Lindsey Graham, another outspoken critic of Donald Trump and briefly candidate for president from July to December also it seems received help from the Clintons. An email that simply states, cleared the road for him in 2020 could mean that there will be no strong or supported Democrat in the South Carolina Senate race when Graham is up for re-election. As with McCain, Graham has publicly called for a look into the Russian influence in the election. There were a lot of politicians who were opposed to Donald Trump. These, in particular, all share a common bond, however, Trump humiliated them on stage in front of hundreds of millions of people around the world. This is more than just politics or conscientious objecting, this was revenge. Not just revenge. This is out and out treason. Our representatives took an oath to support our constitution and its laws for our benefit, not theirs. This is why gridlock is prevalent in D.C. The treachery and the corruption are on both sides of the coin. Unfortunately, there is no way of knowing who the true Republicans are and who are the ones that are fronts for the Clinton machine the pantsuit mafia. The number of emails is too overwhelming to easily sift through them all to find all of the turncoat rhinos. We must be diligent to ferret out those that have sold their souls for power. The only hope that we have for transparency of the Clintons anytime soon rests in an audit carried out by the IRS. Behold, in recent days, there is a call to impeach the commissioner of the IRS. Interesting times we live in to be sure. Only time and work on our part will push this audit forward. Even though Hillary lost the presidency, she is still a power behind the scenes with these revelations. With her Democratic allies in Pelosi and Schumer and her Republican lackeys in the form of Ryan and other Republicans, she will set the agenda and pull the strings. We the people will have no idea who is on our side and who is not. 
For the Clintons, it will mean that even though the American people are supporting Trump and making America great again, they will set the agenda. We will be left scratching our heads and wondering how the GOP and Trump cannot accomplish anything. Clinton will be in control without having to ever show her hand or be responsible to the people. The Soros Clinton team will have killed the republic and we will never know until it is too late. This Russian news story perhaps is the ultimate coup for the Clinton camp. She does not even have to be the winner of the electoral college vote to have gained power. Should enough electors defect to Hillary or name another candidate in their votes, electors are not legally bound to vote for their candidate, then that could throw the vote into the House and Senate. The suspicious part of this simply is this. On January 20 a new president will be inaugurated. The Constitution in the 25th Amendment spells out the line of succession if there is still not a picked president, the vice president shall become president, Kane or Pence. If the Senate has not picked the vice president by noon on the 20th, the Speaker of the House shall become president. Coincident? The Roman Republic lasted for centuries in the hands of the people before falling to become the Roman Empire. That change did not happen by a foreign invasion or foreign intrigue. No barbarian or forceful enemy defeated that republic over 2,000 years ago. It was defeated from the inside by the treachery of the Senate and the blood of the slain Julius Caesar. Just as Caesar was stabbed in the back by men he thought were his allies, Trump is facing the same treachery. In the coming days and months, without our help and diligence, President Trump may also be gasping. At 2, Paul, 